Welcome back, you guys. Today we're going to be working on the FNX45. I'm really excited about this build because I have not worked on one of these before with CNC work. I've done some minor stuff like optic cuts and coloring, but we haven't really done anything to the slide. So a customer reached out to me. They said, hey, I've got this brick of a slide. And no joke, this thing is heavy. I'm, I'm not kidding you. And they're like, we, we're after some weight reduction, we're after some appearance change, and overall, we just wanna make it different. We don't want it to be the FN look anymore. We wanna get it off of there. We wanna make it look just something different overall and something unique. And guys, I'm gonna quickly take you through that process, give you an understanding of exactly what you're watching kinda as it unfolds, um, kinda just builds that picture mentally as we uh, progressively move forward with the project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some raptor cuts from where would be the front dovetail to where the barrel is, Something to take into consideration is this is a 45 ACP, not a nine, not a 40, 45. So what that means is we have to take more precautionary steps than what we typically would because the bullet itself is larger, it has a larger charge obviously with powder and it has more kick overall, which internally means that we have, could come, could come into structural problems. We don't wanna have any of those structural problems inside. We wanna make sure we keep that rigidity overall for the life of the slide. We wanna make sure that we make good choices while we're doing them. So. What that means is we're gonna end up running some Raptor cuts, but the Raptor cuts are gonna be a little bit farther forward and a little less in the barrel lockup area. We also wanna make sure we stay away from that front dovetail. We don't wanna protrude into there or cause any issues with the actual front iron sight. So somewhere in this area where my finger is, you're gonna start seeing four on each side Raptor cuts. We'll be able to see some nice barrel down through the top. Very, very overall pleasing the way that that's gonna change the image of the slide from the factory to those Raptor cuts. So I'm really excited about that. Now. On the side, we're gonna end up doing a Cobra nose. And I'm really, really excited about the Cobra nose because I haven't seen one. I've been looking, couldn't find one anywhere. I don't know if, I do, if it's ever even been offered by anybody before. So this is gonna be an opportunity to cut a Cobra nose on the front. We'll obviously be able to see the C cut out so we'll be able to see where the barrel would be. We're gonna be able to see that nice chamfer. Uh, we're gonna get that real visual. However, I do not have a barrel here. If we're not doing barrel work, I don't recommend my customers send me all these extra parts for me just to hold on to our bag. So at the end of the day, we're gonna do our best to give you that visual of what it would look like if there was a barrel in there, but we do not actually happen to have the FNX 45 barrel with us today. So we're just gonna kinda um, give you the best visual that we can give you without having all the parts here. What we're gonna do now, guys, we're gonna get over to the Tormach 770. We're gonna cut this precision work on this slide we're gonna do a little bit of sandblasting, a little bit of prep work, a little bit of coloring, bring it back. We're gonna take a look and see exactly how it came out in the end. I'm very, very excited about this. This happens to be one of the first FNX 45s I've, I've really put this much uh, cut work into. So should come out pretty beautiful. So let's, uh, let's see if we uh, can make that happen. Right, guys let's take a look and see exactly how this came out in the end as our final product we ended up going with those raptor cuts a little bit closer to the center than what we typically do now the reason we did that was the wall thickness is a little bit thicker than our typical slides that we end up cutting those raptor cuts on we usually end up putting them on something like a shield a glock a compact m p and the walls just were a little bit more durable obviously because we're running with a 45 acp they're going to have that extra strength there and because this is an fn so fn just builds their their uh, slides different than the rest of the market not all of them are the exact same it's always a learning experience with each and every project that we take on um so we ended up moving a little closer obviously we're gonna be able to see a little bit better barrel very pleased with the way that came out in the end left a pretty good portional lockup room up in the front here where the front dovetail goes in we didn't want to have any issues with that then of course we left a Pretty significant amount of material from where the barrel's gonna lock up to where those Raptor cuts are. We wanna make sure we aren't gonna lose any of the strength, keep that rigidity over the time. Just wanna make sure that we're not gonna have any issues with this slide uh, you know, for the duration of the pistol itself. Wanna make sure that we're not gonna have any issues uh, long-term. So definitely a good choice of the way that came out. 
The Raptor cuts also blend extremely well with the way the side front serrations come together. Sometimes <clears throat> these become butchered and they don't really look all that nice. I've done a couple of CZs that were some Raptor cuts. Sometimes these become really mangled and they have to be straightened out um, just with the way in which the two angles come together, the way in which the cutter slices through the, the factory serrations isn't always that pleasant. This was not the case. This actually happened to come out pretty nice overall. I'm really pleased with the way that that uh, kind of flows. And then we did the Cobra nose on the front. Now, we don't have a barrel, so unfortunately I'm unable to show you exactly what that looks like. <clears throat> I am still very pleased with the way that it looks overall. I actually ended up already having that factory chamfer on the nose. We didn't have to do a lot with that. We wanted to make sure we did it correctly uh, and make it not look kind of odd. We're definitely gonna be able to see some nice barrel down through the side here. Very pleased with it overall. Um, once again, new to me, new to you guys, kind of new to the market. Really haven't seen any of those out there. So um, very, very cool overall to, to finally see a new product in hand. And for me, it was kind of cool because I ended up doing something I haven't done before. So guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to take you outside. I'm going to grab you a couple pictures. We're going to talk about a couple more things. Let's take a look at those pictures. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that content. It happened to be something new to me something I have not done before, and it was definitely new to you guys. I always try to put new content on the channel, give you guys something new to watch. Not every project is one of these extreme builds. Sometimes it's just something basic. Sometimes it's just something different. Sometimes it's just something unique that we haven't done before. And today's build was just one of those. Um, I also brought out an FNP. Now, I happen to have another customer's gun here at the same time. They only sent in for an optic cut. Wanted to use it in the video real quick. This is your blue titanium that we ran. This is the FNX. This is the FNP. Quite honestly, I'm not a real big FN guy. I really don't know the difference between these two. I don't happen to have frames, barrels, or sights or anything like that. So uh, they're probably somewhere. There's some kind of a, a visual change. I don't know what that is. They happen to look pretty much the same. But I brought it out today to let you guys know that we do offer optic cuts for these FNX and FNP slides. So if you happen to have one, you want to have that done, let me know, reach out to me, and uh, we can get you uh, a quick turnaround on your optic cut. This is the Ridgeway Blue, so it's really like blue blue. And then on the left, we have our uh, uh, Titanium Blue. So Ridgeway and then Titanium. Uh, really cool overall. I like the way that they both are, um, but once again, I, I don't know 100% the difference in them. This is your FNP, this is your FNX. One of you guys will probably set me straight. Um, and that's that's perfectly fine. But guys, I guess I'm going to quickly show you that we do offer the optic cuts in that as well. You'll be able to see that on the webpage. You'll be able to purchase that from the webpage. Always, always feel free to reach out to me. Go to the contacts tab. Let me know what you got going on. I'll quote you directly from there. You don't have to buy from the webpage. If you've got questions about some things, <clears throat> let me know what those questions are. We'll iron out those details before we uh, before we get you your slide heading this way, before we get that work started. Guys, I also wanted to show you something else. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. We're going to clear off this table. We're going to show you something. So if you happen to have uh, seen me at one of the gun shows, you probably ended up seeing this out on the table. Very cool build overall. It's Glock 19. And um, this, is, this happens to be a Gen 3. We ended up doing the double undercut the finger removal and then shave the sides. Now, this was just one of those deals where I got this gun used, I wanted to clean it up a little bit, and I wanted to show something that we haven't necessarily done before. Um, what this is is a rough texture on the frame itself, so we end up going through the process of doing the work to the actual frame. Once the work's been done to the frame, we end up doing a special process on the polymer itself, then we coat it, and what that does is it gives you that sandpapery grip so these are both sprayed at the same time. These are both the Coyote, oh, I'm lying to you. These are both Glock FDE, so they're a little bit darker. This is Glock's version of FDE. So you can see this one's real smooth, and this one's not real smooth. Um, they're both sprayed at the exact same time, so it's the same mixture and everything like that, but it's a process in which we take and do to the actual polymer before we actually put the coating on it. So there's an opportunity there to have some, uh, some different things done at the end of the day. Not everything has to be the same. Some people like the grip removal, like the newer ones. Some people end up wanting to go through that process and have uh, something laser stippled on it and not color. They want the black to shine through. I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing yet. We may end up using this as one of our training guns. I know we've got some training content to still go through with, with our laser buyers. We do sell lasers. They do come with full training. We do talk about stippling and, and colors being done on stainless and air evacuation systems and things. And this happens to be one of our builds that I actually was putting together for our training material. So... <clears throat> 
it's a, it's a good opportunity there if you're looking for a laser, if you're just wanting to get out there and kind of jump to the front of the list because you're, you don't really want to try to learn it yourself. You want to just kind of turn the work. You already have that, that clientele that's already reaching out to you for certain things. Definitely reach out to us. Let us know what you got going on there. We'll try to assist you the best way we, we can possible. We'll try to get you to the front of the list and making money immediately as soon as your laser comes in. So, But guys, definitely go through our older content. We've got a lot of cool older stuff in there. We have a lot of really unique builds, just different stuff that you don't see from the other people that are out there. Um, definitely go through that. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Reach out to us. Let us know if you have any questions about anything. Instagram is definitely the place to be. We post a lot of just the pictures. Like this wasn't a build, okay? So you'll probably end up seeing the pictures there. Obviously, this is going to be used for our training materials. So at the end of the day, you're still not going to see a, a video build of this. You will see pictures um, because we'll, we'll end up still uh, demoing it a little bit where we're not going to actually show the full build process because that, that content only gets turned out to our, um, our laser buyer. So you won't see that video. Um, but what you will see is a final product. So definitely follow us over on Instagram. If you don't do Instagram, follow us over on Facebook. A lot of that stuff uh, seamlessly gets transposed from the, the one version, which is Instagram. It gets posted over onto our Facebook at the same time. So definitely an opportunity there if you don't happen to do Instagram not a big deal just follow us on Facebook guys if you need anything at the end of the video you're always gonna see a phone number you're gonna see an email address you're gonna see all kinds of good stuff go down to the video description our email address is down there uh, we recommend that you reach out to us let us know exactly what you want to have done and we'll uh, we'll get that quote turned out for you guys have a good one